What up? What up? What up? We back. We back. Y'all see it. Y'all see the uniform out. So y'all already know what time it is. Back on the Grizzly. I did this in a minute, so I'm going to wait for some people to come in and make sure y'all can hear me. Make sure y'all can hear me. I'll wait for some of y'all to come in. Oh, all right. Now we rolling. Now we rolling. Hey, if you can hear me, let me know. I got the mic on. What's up? What's up? Can you hear me, Travika? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Okay, but can you hear me? Am I good? Am I straight? If y'all can hear me, let me know. What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? Okay, cool. We good? All right, bet. 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 What up? We here. We back. So y'all already know what time it is. Back from vacation. The last part of the vacation was very good. Vacation was lovely. All clear. Good, 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 good. It's been a minute since I chopped it up with y'all, so I want to check in. Make sure y'all were straight. Make sure y'all were straight. We got a good one today. We got a good live stream. Hold on, y'all. Let me make sure this is going to turn it right. We got a good one. Because I want to talk real. This is why having a, a good mindset is so important in this field. Especially if you're working, if you're a new nurse working in long-term care. I'm trying to tell you. Your mindset it's one of the most important things that's going to help you in this journey. Because I want to tell y'all something, man. There is a lot of jealousy. And there is a lot of hate. That watermelon looks good. There's a lot of jealousy and a lot of hate in these long-term care facilities, y'all. I'm for real. And I want y'all to be aware of that for those who choose to go work in that arena. It's just a lot of that. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't know why, because to me, it seems like in this field, it's opportunities for everybody to eat. So I don't know why that why the jealousy, the envy, and the hate is so strong within this field. I don't know. But especially like in a long-term care setting, it's it's terrible. You know, it's people in a long-term care field, other nurses, schedulers, whoever the case may be. It's people that really don't want to see you live a good life. That's wild. It's people that legit don't want you to be happy with yourself. It's people that legit don't want you to enjoy yourself. People don't want you in this field to enjoy the fruits of your labor. There are a lot of unhappy. I don't know why this field draws so many unhappy people to it. I don't know why. I really don't. Maybe this field is a solution for a lot of people. And they get in it to solve a problem. Man, but it's, 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 I don't know. Well, I mean, that's true. I, I know that's true, but it's different in the nursing home, though. It'll be people that'll be mad at you because you helping out. So, y'all know I don't, I don't do the gossip. I don't care about that. But a co worker of mine hit me up because I was asking about a schedule. I actually hit her up. And I said, hey, uh, can you just let me know what days I'm on the schedule? And she said, yeah, she let me know. 
And uh, she just, hey, she was just letting me know we real cool. She said, you know, heads up, you know, such and such been saying this because I feel like you, um, they upset with you because, well, not upset, but they just been talking because you've been getting so many hours. So my thing is this. <laughs> I don't understand how another person can be mad at you or upset or, or some type of way about you getting a lot of out. Another nurse like themselves or who don't like the situation they're in. Because there have been times where I picked up and I was the only staff nurse on the schedule leaving a room for a whole bunch of other people to come pick up. That's the only thing you can really say. Oh, he getting too many hours or hold on. I'm trying to take the because it's picking up every people Wi-Fi. He getting too many hours or I don't like the fact that he getting all the hours, but the hours are there for anybody to get. We've had agency in the building. We've had agency in the building because there was nobody willing to pick up the hours. You dig what I'm saying? There was nobody there to pick up the hours, but people are, so I don't understand how can you, but see, here's the thing though. And I told y'all, this is why it's, ten, and me, it, they don't say it to me, so I don't ever see it. The only, the only reason that I know this, you know, is because somebody else told me. They don't ever tell me. They don't ever tell me. So I, I don't know. But I have been in situations before where I've worked with schedulers at past jobs that have been so jealous and so envious because you live in a good life outside of work. You know what I'm saying? You'll come in and pick up, but they'll tell you, well, you can't request these days off and everything like that. Even though they got the staff, they just don't want you to have the days off because they know you having your fun. This is why I tell everybody. This is why I tell everybody when they get into this field, you have to understand that there are a lot of people that are very, very unhappy in this field. And you have to have a, a very laser focused mindset. You, If you brand new, you got to get to the point to where you got your paper right to where if you need to walk away from the nonsense, you can. You can just walk away and it's not a big deal. This is why I really push hard for people to get that first 20 G's. Get your first 20 G's. Because once you once you get your first 20, I feel like you you in a good situation. Because you got your 20 G's, you ain't really you ain't really, you know, bothered by the nonsense. Me, I just like the work. But here's the thing though. See, I've been getting good reviews at my at my uh at my job. I've been getting good I've been getting good reviews on Google. I literally had my Adon or my Adon sent me a Google review. Somebody left to me on my, on my, uh, on, she texted me while I was gone. And she said, you know, thank you. Appreciate you for what you do. And I'm like, cool. That's, you know, I accept all that. That's great. That's great. But my thing is, I don't understand how another how somebody else, another employee is upset because you getting the hours and you live in your life. You live in your good life because you, you've you learned how to finesse your time. The problem is, though, a lot of people are not willing to put in that type of work. They're not willing to pay the price for the lifestyle. Because let's face it, ladies and gentlemen, this lifestyle takes work. Rather you want to, I, I don't care how, what kind of credentials that you got. If you don't work, your credentials mean absolutely nothing. You just sitting there with a whole bunch of credentials and you're not making no money if you don't work. You have to put in some type of work. And people want to avoid the work. They want to avoid the hours. They want to avoid all that stuff. And I could care less. I could care less if they, if they was looking at this page. Cause it is what it is and that's another thing that i've started to notice the, the the popular the more popular i've become i mean it is what it is people gonna look people gonna look and it's gonna be in every career field it's gonna be in every part but again they don't say it to me so i don't know and i mean and i wouldn't participate in that nonsense anyway and the only reason i'm even bringing this up on here 
is so y'all can be prepared for what y'all about to go through. Especially you, and I keep y'all probably think I'm playing when I say this, but especially you pretty nurses that like to get that, that like to work. I'm not joking. This is very real. This is extremely real. You will have people that hate to see you living your best life from management all the way down to the to the janitor. You know what I'm saying? Me, I could care less because I'm gonna still get mine regardless. It don't bother me one bit, but I just really wanted y'all. I put this out there so y'all can see and y'all could be aware of what happens when you focus. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. Do not look for validation as a nurse. I'm telling you, if you are in this field to seek validation from other people, from family members, from patients, from from your manager, I'm sorry. It, it doesn't come too often. <laughs> it doesn't come too often. I've seen some of the best nurses go unnoticed. I've seen some of the best nurses not get credit. Nursing is very political. It's very political. The nursing homes are very political if you let it be. But this is why, again, when you go looking for a job, when you go looking for a job as a nurse, two things that I look for, and I tell people this, the two things that I look for when I'm looking for a job, one, I go check and see what kind of, I look in the, in the, I look at the average income of what people in the city make or in the county make. That tells me a lot about what I'm going to get into. That tells me a lot about the mindset. Now, if I look in a county, if I check out a nursing home and it's in a county to where the average income is, is low, I know what I'm walking into. It is what it is. And I also check out the turnover rates. It's okay to ask about, well, what's the turnover rates here at this particular place? So I check out the county, the income of the county or the city, and I ask about the turnover rates because that lets you know two things. One, when you look at the income, the average income, it lets you know what kind of people you're dealing with for the most part. Not always, but for the most part. Two, now when you check out, <clears throat> I said the county and uh, what was the other one that I said I look for? I check out the county. Hold on, hold on. I want to read that. What did I say? I just lost the track that quick. I check out the count and the turnover rate. Because once you, if you ask and they got a high turnover rate, there's a good chance that you can get some paper up in there. But you got to be careful, though. Because now if, if the facility is doing some straight up illegal nonsense, that you don't, you don't want to be up in there. But if you got a facility that yes yeah, a high turnover rate but it's not really that bad people just don't want to be there they don't really feel like putting up with the crackheads and the dope fiends and all that kind of stuff because you got people that don't want to deal with that you got some nurses that just straight up want to take care of elderly elderly old people you know what i'm saying that just want their medication and that's it and i'm not mad at them for that i'm not mad at them one bit for that but then you got some places where you know they're getting younger and younger they got crackheads, dope fiends, meth heads, all kind of people, pill poppers, people that's addicted. You got thieves, klepto, maniacs. You got all kind of people in these facilities now. And if you know how to deal with these people, you got tough skin, but the turnover rate is high, that means you can get your paper. See, the fortunate thing about being in this thing is that you can still get your money once you develop that tough skin and once you develop that mindset. That's why I put out my book, The Ultimate LPM Mindset. It wasn't just something that something I said. It's something that you really have to develop to get that paper. It's something that you really have to develop to get that money. To get that money in these nursing homes because it's not a walk in the park. And a lot of people like to make it seem like, oh, well, it's just a walk in the park. You go in, pass your pill. No, 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 no. Not only are you dealing with stuff from the patient, you got to deal with your coworkers too, possibly. Now, me being a male, it might be different for the ladies. I don't know. It might be. Well, I do know because I've seen it. But uh, it's different because, again, I don't hear. I only hear about the drama. I don't get involved in the drama. You dig what I'm saying? I hear about it. I'll hear five different stories from five different people when something goes down. It is what it is. People feel comfortable saying what they got to say to me because I don't go back 
tell the next person about what that person said. I literally just brush it off and I'm about my business and I keep it moving. And that's how you got to be. That's literally how you got to be. You dig what I'm saying? But it's always good to have you. If you somebody that like to get money, because here's the thing. It's always good to have you a PRN job on deck. Um, I feel you ravishing. I don't really like the drama either, but I just don't listen. You know what I'm saying? I just oh, okay, that happened. All right, cool. Because sometimes you need to know certain information. But I just don't listen. It's one. It's literally in one ear and out the other. But uh, keep you a PRN job on deck, a contingent job on deck, maybe even a part-time job on deck. Because I'm telling you, sometimes when they see you getting too much money, they don't like that either. Even though they need the help. Now, I've, I haven't really experienced that in the nursing home that I work at currently. I haven't experienced that. But when you get too much money up in there, no. they not. They, a lot of people don't like that, especially them old hating schedulers. For whatever reason. For whatever reason. And some of these nursing homes, some of these schedulers is so bitter and envious. Hmm. Corrections. I heard about that. I think I might have to look into corrections. I might have to look into corrections. For the most part, people I'm around are professional. You still have those that are low-key ambient which to but they won't say it out loud. Oh yeah. Oh, make no bones about it. It's it's definitely ghetto. I'm not saying that's all the all situations. But around here, if you want to get the money for real, you have to go to where the money is. Everybody wants to work in a beautiful facility, but nine times out of ten, the beautiful facilities where it's fully staffed and all that kind of stuff, you're not going to be able to get no paper in there. And your leverage, you ain't going to have a lot of leverage in those kind of facilities because they got people beating down their door to get in there. No, 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 no. I don't play like that. I don't play like that. I need leverage. I need leverage because I, 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 like, to, I like to go out of town too much. And I like overtime. So I need leverage. You dig what I'm saying? So you go to a place where y'all can do business. Let's do business. You need a nurse. You you need a nurse. You need somebody to do their thing up in here. I want the time off and I want the overtime. It's hard to do business. You know, and I'm, I'm not saying that you can't work there, you know, at a, at a very nice facility and everything like that. But, I you know, I want to go where I'm needed. Because once you go where you're needed for real, and that's where you can make your money. This is all about an even exchange. This is just business. And I understand how business works. And you got to understand how I work in this thing, too. You know what I'm saying? Now, again, I haven't had no trouble. But I just notice. I notice and I hear things. You know what I'm saying? I see things. It's a very toxic environment. And this is coming from several facilities that I've worked at over the years. I never will understand how a scheduler will can get upset at somebody for wanting to go out of town, live their life. They come to work. They don't call off. They don't come late. You dig what I'm saying? They pick up extra shifts. And they so when they got the staff or can find coverage, oh, you can't, we can't really let you have why? No good reason. The sad part is realizing that your coworkers is not your friend. Your coworkers is not your friend. Like, let me tell you something. Rarely do you find cool cool i mean listen it's inevitable that you're gonna get close to some of your co-workers you know what i'm saying you you are bound to get cool with some of them but you gotta just be careful man it's some co-workers that i'm very cool with that i will consider actually traveling and going out of town with because i haven't seen no phony snake behavior and that's cool i'm not saying don't you know what i'm saying i'm not saying don't make a new friend but i'm saying that you have to be careful Co-workers are never your friends. I'm there to make money, not friends. And that's a that's a good mindset to have. But the longer you work with people, you start to develop relationships with them. And, you know, y'all just bound to get cool. But if you can keep it professional all the way, don't get close and all that kind of stuff, then that's great, too. I'm not knocking that. But I got some co-workers that I'm cool with. You know what I'm saying? That I'm, that I'm cool with. And it is what it is. You can only expect people to be people. I'm not a robot. 
You know what I'm saying? You work with if you working with the same people, twelve hours a day, five days out the week. I mean, y'all bound to share common interests. And okay, this person cool. This person cool. But you know, you ain't got to tell the whole world your business and all that kind of stuff. It's always stuff you don't. You don't listen. You put out what you want to put out there. You put out what you want to put out there. But let it be known at the end of the day. What up, Nurse Viv? Let it be known at the end of the day, we here to get this money. We here to get this paper and, and, and nothing else. It all stays the same. It all stays the same. We can get this money. We can go home. I'm going to focus on me. I'll do what I got to do and get a crack. That's facts. But, uh, yeah, y'all just make sure, man. What? Man, what? They be hating. They like, and I don't, I just never understood that, though. Especially when you need the help. Especially when you need the help. And listen, you could be the person that don't say a word, that don't bother nobody, you don't talk to nobody. But people will find something to dislike about you. It happens. But you can't be focused on that. I focus on what I got next. I got some, I got another trip in less than 30 days. I'm focused on that and getting this with and getting this money. That's it. I'm not focused on none of none of that other stuff. I'll come in there, I'm not nasty. I'm a happy person. I got stuff to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? Everybody have bad days, but for the most part, this is straight over here. It's crazy. We spend most of our lives at work and deal with, yeah. And that's the thing, too. And that's another thing, too. Because you don't, that's why this is so dope, because you don't have to spend most of your life at work. You, I was just talking about that on my last video. You can work two months, three months out the year, work really hard, and then take four months off. And go live your life, especially if you look, if you know how to budget, you know how to, you know what I'm saying, you don't have a game. If you don't have a gang of bills, you work hard for three, four months, three, four months off. I met, well, we didn't meet him, but we ran into a guy that's spending 21 days in Mexico, just chilling. Let me tell you something. If y'all ain't never been to Mexico, if y'all ain't never been to Cancun, y'all got to go. Y'all got to go. I would, I would spend 30 days in Cancun, no problem. I'm dead serious and have a ball and have a ball. But that's the thing about, yep, you travel the whole world. You can work three, four months. You work six days off the week. You work six days a week for three months. Stack your chips and take you two, three months off. That's living right there because you got to work. And then you record your travels. Once you record your travels, you got you got more income coming in because now you're starting to build up passive income. So now you're getting paid. Not only are you getting paid, you're getting paid to do something that you was gonna do for free anyway. That's the that's the part about YouTube that I like. You say get out of the nursing homes, uneducated staff. Well, the nursing homes gotta have people in it. So who else gonna if the, if there ain't nobody in there who gonna take care of those patients? Who gonna take care of those patients? I hear what you're saying, but they gotta have they gotta have somebody in there. Somebody gotta work it. You did, but if y'all ever get a chance, and can I get thirty likes, please? There's thirty people in here. But if y'all ever get a chance, go to Cancun, man. I'm telling you, y'all gonna have a blast. I was part of a social media site and I really got out of it because you could tell people hate it. Yeah. How do you get that book? How do you get what book? How do you get what book? You talking about the ebook? The ultimate LPM mindset? Oh, well, you can get that book by going to the highvalueunurse.com. That's how you get that, if that's what you're talking about. For those who didn't know. That's how you do that there. But, uh, yeah.
people that's crazy like people will literally hate on your success and like from your co-workers to your friends to your family y'all gotta understand man when y'all on this journey of success and doing what's not a part of the norm be prepared to walk alone for a lot of this i really want y'all to understand that be prepared to walk alone for a lot of this journey You got my life, brother. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Y'all got to be prepared to walk alone. And people don't understand how it can get. You dig what I'm saying? People don't understand how lonely your road can get, but you got to be comfortable with you. you see, that's why I only told one person. Yeah. Y'all got to get used to walking alone. You a person that... Listen, you a person that's trying to go on vacation once a month. That's not the that's not normal. If you a person that's trying to work three months and, and, and take off three months, that's not the norm. Most people cannot do that. Don't let nobody belittle what you're doing. I don't care how small and how insignificant it may seem to the next man. That's why you got to focus on you. You cannot let nobody belittle your journey. I'm here to tell you, taking a vacation seven to ten days off every month is not most people don't take a vacation once a year let alone once a month you dig most people don't take a vacation once a year some people never go on vacation some people y'all know some people go their whole life and never leave their home state so don't know, don't let nobody don't let nobody try to make your 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 accomplishments in this game seem small. I don't care what nobody got to say. That's not normal. And that's why so many people that hate on a lifestyle. That's why so many people can't stand the fact that it's nurses out here that can work and build a business and enjoy their life at the same time. That's not normal. Nothing about that is normal. Most people cannot relate to that. Some people have to work mandatory overtime because their jobs make them do it. It's not like that. Well, I don't know how it is with nursing homes or some, some hospital. I don't know if they do, man. I, I'm sure it's, it's probably some out there, but you don't have to do mandatory nothing if you don't want to. And then you can work as many hours <coughs> as you want if you're willing to put it in. You dig what I'm saying? It's it's that's rare. That's not that's not uh, most people's reality, bro. Most people's reality is going to work forty hours a week, coming home to a person they don't like, can't stand, coming on coming home to some crying, nagging kids, ungrateful, don't appreciate them, getting an old lackluster dinner going back to work to a job they hate that is most people and they they might go down south every five six years that's how most people are living right now you got most people can't a lot of people can't even afford to live by themselves so when people be like oh you just the lpn don't bother me one bit it shouldn't bother you it shouldn't bother you you dig what i'm saying I'm trying to tell you how people do, bro. All while we in Mexico. Oh, you guys come down here a lot. We met this couple. You know, we was telling, they was at, for some reason, people love coming up talking to my lady and I when we on vacation. We met this couple. They just randomly started talking to us. Because, you know, when they see black folks in a nice environment, like the place that we were staying, you know, niggas, get, they get curious. They get curious. They see two niggas out there. They wondering what, what you do. Oh, uh, they don't have no problem asking either. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we met this one. Hold on, before I tell you about the one couple we met, and they was nice. The, the couple I'm about to tell y'all, both couples were very nice. We met this one black couple. They were from they from Ohio. They were an older couple. Older black couple. You know what I'm saying? Not too much, but you know, in their forties, fifties, you know, older than us. You know, not calling them old. But, uh, you know, they was like, hey, brother, you know, I see. You know, because it's, it's rare that we see us. 
out here like that. You know what I'm saying? So when we see us, hey, brother, what's up, brother? How you doing, brother? I, like, when people, listen, I'm telling you, this is why it's so important to travel. Because when people are, um, when people are traveling, their mindset is different because they done paid a certain amount of money to go to this place for a certain amount of days. This is why when people pay money to go to all inclusives, like nice all inclusives and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? People ain't really on no BS. They trying to get to know other people, be friends and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, he came up, he was like, hey, brother, you know, well, we got sat next to him, but he had saw me earlier today with my camera because I was vlogging earlier that day because I was vlogging. So he was like, um, hey, you know. So they started talking to us. Where you from? And everything like that. He was from Jamaica. Shout out to Vince. He was from Jamaica. His wife was from Ohio, but they lived in Ohio. We was just telling them about, you know, we had just got off the cruise and we came there. What? Wow. You know what I'm saying, man? That's nice. You know, I could tell he wanted to ask what I did for a living. He wanted to ask me so bad. The brother did, but he wasn't trying to get in my business. But he was like, wow, man. So how often y'all travel? What? Every other month? Every 30 days? Whoa. That's crazy. Boy, you you must be, you must got it. You know, you know how we do when we trying to figure out some information without figuring it out. So um I finally told him because I it was killing him. It was killing. Him. I said, you know, well, I'm a nurse and everything. Like he was like, oh man, that's so good to see. You know, a, a lot of brother, because he was like, you know, you look, you look, you know, relatively young to be traveling like that for your age and anything like that. So me and me and my lady, we just talking to him and his wife. He was like, man, that's so good to see. He took down my number and everything, man. He's like, man, yeah, I would love to try one of these cruises and everything. So that was that. The next day, we met a couple. They were a white couple. And they was nice. They was nice. You know what I'm saying? They was asking us about Cancun and stuff like, oh, y'all, y'all, you come here often. You you come here often, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is our first time. How many times have you been to Cancun? Uh, about five, six, seven times, something like that. We lost count. And uh, well, what do you do? That's they. <laughs> that's they next line. Why? And listen, white folks don't have no problem when they see you out there. They don't have no problem asking you what they do for you. What you do for a living? They have no problem asking. Now it's up to you with how you react to that. Because at first, when I first got started traveling for real, and they used to ask me that, I used to get kind of irritated at that. You know what I'm saying? I used to give them troll answers and all that kind of stuff. You dig what I'm saying? But now I don't because I'm very proud of what I do. And to see the looks on their face when, when you say it to them, you know the ones that don't expect you to be there. You know, they, usually they older. They be the older ones. You know what I'm saying? The looks on their faces are priceless sometimes because they just, what? It's, it's, it's black folks that don't rap and play basketball and, and, and sing and dance. What? You know, because a lot of times, the more places you go, they be thinking you famous. You know, I done got confused for a football player so many times. When we was in the DR, I got confused for a football player. They thought I was a football player because they see a big black, black, big black dude walking around. Oh, he must be famous. He must be famous. Oh, so when we was in the DR a couple years ago, a white guy gonna ask me straight up. So what team do you play for? I see, I see you have a Michigan shirt on. Are you a Detroit Lion? <laughs> I said no, no, I'm not. I'm not a pro athlete. No, really, man. By your size, I just would assume you're an athlete. Well, what are you doing here? They love us. Well, what are you doing out here? <laughs> I said I'm a. I said I'm on vacation. <laughs> well, what do you do? They don't got, now, this is back when he asked me. This is when I was kind of getting irritated with that question because I would get asked the question so much. Well, what do you do? You know, I got my jersey on, walking around with a, with a, with a do-rag on <laughs> at breakfast. I said, well, uh, I'm a nurse. A nurse? You, know, you could have fooled me, pal. Oh, uh, <laughs> And again, you know, it's... it's they just be shocked. And now I've learned to enjoy that look. You know what I'm saying? When we were on one cruise, we was on Celebrity. Now, Celebrity is like a, you know, it's like a luxury cruise line or whatever. It was these three, these three golden girls. We're going to just call them golden girls. It was these three golden girls. And they, they was like, wow. You know, they all, they get intrigued when they see, 
when they see us to a black woman and a black man on a, on a cruise like this where it's mostly older white people on there <laughs> you dig what i'm saying i be curious she was like well you guys are so young you guys are so young and you cruise this are you retired did you hit the lottery <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> I was like, no, I'm a nurse, and I just pretty much make my own schedule. What? Then they want to know where you work at. No, no, no. Now you're doing too much, because that one nurse wanted... She's like, well, my daughter's a nurse, but she doesn't do that. Where do you work? No, now you're doing too much. Now you're doing too much. Chill out. Relax. What? A nurse? Well, get out of here. And no cap, right hand, right hand of God. I met a, uh, I met a urologist on one of my cruises. I met a urologist on one of my cruises. Right hand of God. We was on a carnival. I think we was on a Vista for New Year. And it, he was a urologist, and he was actually from Southfield, Michigan. And that's how we started talking. And you know, I just again, he was a, he was nice though. And he was like, yeah, you know, I, you know, I'm loving this cruise. I got to start doing it more often. And he was a guy, older guy. He's about 50, 60 years old. And he was like, uh, yeah, but, you know, I have a practice. I'm a urologist. And I said, oh, okay, cool. I said, yeah, I'm a nurse. I'm in the healthcare field, too. He was just like, wow, and you're traveling like that? He said, man, I need to take a couple of notes from you. And that's funny because that's why I say stop. You cannot compare yourself to other people. Because there are people that you would think, now you hear a medical doctor, you would think that, you know, they doing very well. They could do this all the time. But a lot of that is not, that's not necessarily true with all doctors and people got to understand. Do y'all know what some doctors out there only getting paid 98000 a year? It's some medical doctors, MDs out there that's only getting paid $98,000 a year. That's wild. That's that's diabolical news to me. You dig what I'm saying? I couldn't believe it when I saw it, when I heard it. So you just, it's just, you take that, but you it is what it is. You figure out what you want to do for you and you do it that way. Right. They be in hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt and a lot of the doctors be stressed out, super stressed. And then on top of that, did y'all know that dentists, they said, now don't quote me on this, but they say dentists are is the career field with the highest unalive in themselves rate. Dentists, they say dentists unalive themselves the most out of all out of all the professions in healthcare. Dentists unalive themselves the most. That that's a crazy statistic. That's a crazy statistic. I could not believe it. But a lot of these doctors, some of them are very stressed. And I'm like, nah, you know, and that's, I appreciate doctors and everything like that. That's why you can't compare yourself. I could not believe, I could not believe when I, I like, I was dumbfounded when I heard, I was thinking surgeon might have been high up there, brain surgeon, you know, something like that, cardiologist. When I heard dentist, I was like one of them intrigued people. What? Dentist? I could not believe they had a high unaliving themselves rate. A self-deletion rate. That, that's crazy. And I wonder why. It must be very toxic in, in, that, in that arena. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not in it. But... When you got nurses out here that's making four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year, mm. and they ain't have to go to school for twelve years, sounds good to me. But I, I was shocked hearing that statistic. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I was legit dumbfounded. I'm like, dang, what? A dentist? But it is what it is. 
And I'm not, you know, and I'm not, and I'm not knocking it. We need dentists. We need doctors. We need all. The, everybody matters. We need all these people out here. But I just, to in my journey, I want to have the most fun with the least amount of time <laughs> and the least amount of work required. That's me, though. That's me. Some people they gonna reach. They're going to get all the credentials, and I'm not knocking that. You, If that's what you want to do, then I ain't never, ever going to knock that. Because you don't need a whole world full of memes, because it, no, it wouldn't be them. I'm telling you, we need those people that's going to do that kind of stuff, because I'm not. And I'm not knocking it. I'm not, I wasn't. I just wasn't built for it. I was not built for it. But me, I'm all about stacking my chains and dipping. That's why I can't own no group home. I can't do stuff like I like to be gone too much. I have to make passive income, bro. But people say, oh, you're not going to, you ain't going to never do. My journey is my journey. Mind your business. I mind my business. I'm going to let you do your journey. I ain't going to knock you. I got to go step by step. My first goal is to come and help me. And yeah. I'm going to let you do you. I'm going to wish you well in your journey. And just let me do me. But this is why also you can't tell everybody your goals and your plans. You know what I'm saying? Because it's always going to be somebody with something to say. I heard a nurse on YouTube say you. It's, I heard a nurse literally on YouTube say. It's no way you could travel ex- excessively like that. Save money and work as a nurse. What? I literally heard a nurse say that. And I'm not going to say who said it. Because I'm not like that. But I'm like, that's false. I'm living proof. I'm living proof. I literally heard a nurse on YouTube say that. A nur- the nurse was like, there's no way. Because because when they got their license, they was going out of town a lot and everything like that. But they found out that there's no way you could work, go out of town, stack your money, build, bit. No, no, no. That's that person's job. I'm not knocking it, but I am going to say that's false. You just got to want it all bad enough. And some people just don't want that. But I'm not going to sit here and lie and say you can't do that. It's some things just require some sacrifice. It is what it is. Now, in my opinion, this nurse just doesn't like being a nurse. And that's okay. You dig what I'm saying? In my opinion, this nurse just doesn't like being a nurse. And they got the right to do to feel like that. They got the right to put that on a platform. But I was just like, nah, I can't really rock with that ideology because it's not true. It's literally not true. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say credentials don't matter if you don't have no hustle. It literally means your credentials mean nothing if you have no hustle. That's why, you know, I don't really get too much caught up on that conversation. Yes. I am getting my RN because, you know, I want to expand. But what is an RN to a person with a person that don't want to work? I got an RN in my family right now that I'd rather collect disability checks that ain't really disabled, but got a whole RN. His R, that means his RN degree is absolutely worthless. His license is worthless. He'd rather sit at home, collect disability. Ain't nothing wrong with him. I know because I know for a fact there's nothing wrong with him. Then go out here and work. That means his, his RN is worthless at that point. So he went to school all that time for nothing. I think about all the food delivery hustlers and how they make it. So why can't an LPN? That's a fact. That's a fact. I am. Yes, I am. Bill still got to be paid. But I won't be working as much. I won't be working as much. Oh, and the person that said that, they are already in too. So we're not going to talk about all the money that travel nurses, travel RNs make and all that kind of stuff. But the person that said that is an is a RN too. 
the person said you capping if you if you working if you they said if you if you a nurse and you working traveling all the time and saving money they said you capping they said you can't do that it's not real it don't exist it might not exist in your world <laughs> it might not exist in your world but oh i don't know what i don't know I just I just want to say it's false. It's not real. Cause I know what's real. I know what's though. I'm living proof. That's why I show people the results. That's why I had that's why I created this YouTube page because I wanted to show people the results. Yes. That's when I start. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely real. But that's what's up. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I'm still going to do, when I get my RN, I'm still going to do how being an LPN changed my life. Because LPN started everything. LPN started everything. Like, there's people on my TikTok, and if you're not on uh, my TikTok, Go follow me on TikTok at CJ Kyle's. People on my TikTok are like, hurry up and get your RN. Hurry up and get your RN. I mean, I, I understand them trying to encourage me, but it's like, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I make more than a lot of RN. So I'm like, I'm not, I'm like, yes, I want to do it, but I'm not pressed. People act like I'm pressed. I'm not pressed. I'm not pressed. Like, I'm good. We good over here. That's why I just wanted to come on and like kill all the stereotypes about LPNs, bro. Because you know I'm not pressed. I mean I know I'm not as pretty as the luxury nurses, but the luxury girl nurses out here. But it, it's real. I show all the proof, all of the proof. I don't hide nothing. I'm very transparent when it comes to this LPN life. You know I show everybody. I show the negatives and the positives, the downs. And the ups. You dig? I show you the drama. I show you the politics. I show you everything. But to me, it's more positives than negatives. To me, it's more positives than negatives. What up, Eva? You are definitely keeping me motivated. It feels like I'm going to stay forever, but I know one day. Man, you're going to get through it. It's going to fly by. You're going to turn around and you're going to be like, dang it's really over. And it's going to be like almost it never happened. You're going to be like, it's really done. Like, I'm finished. I I'm completed. <laughs> even show the, even show the med, shows the med takes love. Right. gonna be i'm telling you go ahead and do it knock it out finish it you know what i'm saying i i show you but i show y'all when it comes to this lp in life that it's very very real and it can't be done and you if you hustle you know what i'm saying but this is why i really try to reach out to the young men and women out there with no kids people be like oh you just anti-kid it's not true I be getting a lot of baby mamas hitting me up in the email talking about some I'm anti-kid and all that kind of stuff. No, I'm not. I'm just anti trying to save lives. I mean, not anti, but I'm pro trying to save lives out here. So more kids won't be born in a poverty than, ha than it has to be. That's why I'm trying to reach the younger people and let them know you don't got to be busting up and everything you see raw before you even have a career pop. You dig what I'm saying? I'm trying to save your door. I'm trying to let her know it before she gives them that womb up. She can go get her a career, become satisfied with in that area, make sure she's straight financially. So she don't have to rely on a man if she don't need to. I'm trying to help your daughters out. But a lot of these people be so jealous of their kids, the baby mamas that be hitting me up in it. Y'all should see. See, I don't post a lot of the stuff I get because I'm not that kind of channel. 
I don't, cause I don't, I, I don't really do the drama. But y'all should see some of the emails I get. It be literally single moms hitting me up like, I, you're, "You're wrong. I like you, but you're wrong about what you say about kids." That's just my opinion. Life is easier when you don't have children, and you like it's. Oh, let me say, it's easier to when you have children when you want to have children when you're in a good place financially. When you are in a good place financially, life is easier. You said you can have kids and I like them. Life is easier when you're when you're financially okay. People having kids with no career, working at the Dollar Tree, and mad at the world, and depending on assistance and stuff like that. No, no, no. I just say be as prepared as possible. You young men out there don't even need to be thinking about having no kids until you hit 30 at least 30 very minimum 30 you need to travel you need i think in my opinion before a man decides to have a child you need to have lapped the world at least once you need to have seen the world at least one time so you can see what's really out there before you decide to who you're gonna lay down and get pregnant same for you ladies before y'all decide to lay up and let somebody shoot up your club, you need to see the world at least once and not Miami. People talk about traveling. They swear you talking about my No, it's more to the world than Miami. Okay. The most overrated city in this country. I'm not talking about Miami. I'm talking about the rest of the planet. You dig? That's all I'm saying. Make sure you straight. Make sure you done seen something so you, when your daughter grow up or your son grow up, you don't be jealous of them. Shoot. Right, Miami. So I can't, I, I really don't like Miami. Like, I do not like Miami. The only reason I go to Miami is the cruise because that's what a cruise port is. But it's, to me, Miami is the most overrated city in America. It really is. It really is. All right, y'all. I'm about to get up out of here. I'm here at the gigs. I'm going to let y'all in a minute. God first. Peace.